Hey what's up, I'm Brian and this is the first video in a series of very cool tutorials about core data. Core data is a very simple way to save um, and persist information of your iOS and macOS application. And the cool thing about core data is that you can handle um, all sorts of data the same way as you handle properties and classes. And what that means, I, I want to show you in this illustration from the iOS developer library. Here you can see what is called a core data stack. Core data stack, and this is important for the next video, is um, consists of a managed object context at the top, um, and below that is a so-called persistent star coordinator, and below that a persistent object store which communicates directly with the SQLite file in which all of the informations are stored. Now everything that has to do with this database file here at the bottom is none of your business. All you need to do is interacting with the managed object context at the top level of this core data stack. You have to uh, create this stack only once in your application and um, everywhere else you can then access this managed object context. When you try to get information out of your database, what you do is um, make a fetch request. And as you can see in this illustration, the fetch request asks the managed object context for information and the managed object context asks then automatically the persistent store coordinator, which asks the persistent object store, um, and which finally asks the database file to give you the information you want and everything you wanted will be returned within an array as so-called managed objects. So how do you create such managed objects and how do you create a data model for your database? This is what we're going to do now, so let's dive right into it and start Xcode. And for the sake of this um, tutorial, we will just create a single view iOS application and call it core data example one. Hit next, create, and we've got a nice uh, empty application with a view controller, an uh, app delegate, and two storyboards. And we want to create now our data model. So let's go ahead and click on File, New File, or just press Command N on your keyboard. And then because we create an iOS application, select Core Data from the iOS section here, and then let's select data model. Hit next. And we can now give our data model a name and model is just fine for our purpose. And we have created a data model. So how do we actually create such managed objects? And the easiest way to do that is by looking at these entities, which are a representation of these data model, of these managed objects. So all we have to do to create an entity is click on Add Entity. And in this example, we will create two entities for a database. One should be called Person, and the other, which we are going to create in a minute, is called Postal Address, because each person has a postal address, and this is a very likely example for a database-driven application. So um, let's hit Enter, and um, we have created our first entity called person. And as you can see here, an, um, an entity uh, consists can consist of attributes, relationships, and fetched properties. What we're going to use are the attributes and the relationships. So let's go ahead and um, look at attributes first. And attributes are nothing else um, than properties of a class. So what property would you give a class person. Very likely you would say, well, er every person should have a name. So let's give it the attribute name. And um, which type would you give it? Actually, most likely you would give it the type string. So we have created our first entity with its first attribute. And for the sake of um, an easy example, let's keep it that way and just um, ha let, let's have this person entity, the attribute name. And as I said, we wanted to uh, we want to create another entity called postal address. So let's click add and um, click on this new entity. 
and say postal address. And you might have noticed that I start each entity with a um, uppercase letter and each attribute with a lowercase letter. And this is the same convention as you use for class names and property names. So um, let's now create an attribute for our postal address, um, which would very likely to be, for example, street, because everyone lives in a street. And this also very likely would be a string. So you can change the editor style at the right bottom here. And now you can see that we have created two attributes. And those two attributes do not have a relationship yet. And you can see this here. There is no relationship, but there are attribu uh, attributes. So we need to create a relationship between them. As in every database, you can have one-to-one -one relationships, one-to-many or many-to-many -many relationships. And <clears throat> Again, so that our tutorial is going to be easy, we are going to create um, a one-to-one -one relationship in this case. So to do that, let's change our editor style below here and start with the relationship between person and postal address by clicking the plus button um, under relationships. So let's call this relationship postal address. And this relationship has a destination and this is the postal address. And we can see this in our editor here, that now there is a relationship between postal address and uh, between person and postal address. But there is no way back from postal address to person. So that is the next thing we need to do for our one-to-one -one relationship. So let's click on the postal address entity and also add a relationship here. And we will call this relationship person. And the destination, of course, is person. And when we click now back on person, you can see that there is no inverse yet. So we will uh, click here on person for the inverse of this relationship. And in this case, Xcode already did the right inverse for us in this relationship section. So when we take a look back here in this editor style, um, then you can see that we have a one-way relationship between person and postal address, and also the inverse from postal address to person. So now this is all we had to do to create our data model. And in other uh, database systems, you would have uh, you would have created tables. Um, here we have created entities. And as I said, you can use these entities and core data the same way you use classes and their properties and methods, of course. So what we are going to do now, just say editor and create NS managed object subclass. And now what you have to do is select the data models with entities you would like to manage. And we have created just one data model. So we select this data model, say next, and we want to create managed objects for both entities, person and postal address. So hit next. And we do not click use scalar properties for primitive data types, because that would mean that we would not get um, COCO or uh, core framework um, classes such as um, NS string or um, NS date or things like that. So let's just say create. And you can see now that we have two classes, one with postal address and one with person. And everything here is just managed for you. So we can load later in another tutorial, go on and use those classes to manage our, um, our data we want to store in our core data database. And it is always a good idea to um, keep your, um, to keep your folders here on the left tidy. So let's um, right click on the selected um, classes and files and say new group from selection and call this group data model. In some cases, Xcode has a little bug which, um, which causes it to, um, to misinterpret your data model. In this case, you wouldn't get um, a class of person um, for this property here, it would say NS managed object. If you sh if this should be the case in your example, then just um, again open your data model, and again say pro um, 
editor, create and as managed object subclass and do exactly the same procedure as we did before and select all the entities you want to um, you want to manage and just again create these classes and say replace and then you will have um, everything in the right position and all classes with their correct class names um, and ready for the later use. So much for this tutorial and in the next tutorial we are going to cover how you can use these um, these classes to insert and retrieve data from your um, from your database and how to create a core data stack.